Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. I have something really special in store for you guys today. So Dimitri has been working really hard over the last couple weeks or so on this uh, Lunar Lander script. And this Lunar Lander script, what it does is it allows you to do these suborbital hops from one point on the moon to another. It's really cool. I've been helping him beta test it and I've been having an absolute blast with this thing. So I'm really excited to be able to uh, make a video about it and bring it to you guys. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it and see how this thing works. So let me switch camera views here. And I brought up the scenario and I instantly hit pause so that we can see exactly what's happening uh, from the very start. Now I will say before we get too far into it, I will, uh, right now we're just going to look at the introduction stuff so there's no spoilers here. But a bit later on, I'll give you a point where I'll say, you know, if you don't want to watch me go through it, not to say that I'll even succeed, I might fail at it. But I'll give you a point where I'll say, you know, if you don't want to see anything I do, go ahead and stop. But for now, we're just going to watch the introduction so there's no spoilers here. So let me press Control p to unpause. Welcome to Orbiter Lunar Lander. Would you like to read the instructions? Why, yes, I would. Okay, your ship will be placed on a pad on one of the lunar surface features, and a target pad will be placed on a random set of coordinates on the lunar surface. Your task is to take off and land on the target pad using as little DV as possible. Once the task is complete, a score is given in terms of fuel efficiency percentage. A landing is considered successful if you arrive within a 25 meter radius sphere centered at the target. Your ship must have less than 3 meters per second horizontal and vertical velocity within that sphere. Touching the terrain anywhere else will result in failure. Okay, welcome back to Orbiter Lunar Lander. Randomizing parameters. So right now it's going through this massive list of potential launch sites and it's just going to pick one at random. And it's going to place our vessel at that random launch site. And then it's going to do the same thing for the target. It's going to go through this massive list of target sites, place the target at one of those sites. The number of possible flights here is so high that you could play this thing every day, several times a day for years and never uh, repeat the same flight twice. Although having said that, if you do have a flight that you especially enjoy, there are ways to uh, repeat that flight. Okay, so let's uh, look down here. So you can see right now that our vessel is, uh, it's dark outside, we can't see anything. Uh, the target is in the sun. Now in Orbiter 2016 especially, it's really important to have, uh, to be able to see what you're doing because otherwise everything is so dark that it's just, you can't see anything. So this is giving you a couple of options here. We can basically bring the sun over to our location or not. We have two ways to do that. We can do it smoothly, which just ramps up time warp and then slows time down or we can do it instantly, or we can say, no, we're just gonna go with how things are and see what happens. So let's just do instant. So instantly bring the sun to our location. And just like that, we can see where we're at. And when we get to the target, we'll be able to see what we're doing. Now, when that information gets placed, it puts it in the upper right, which is where my camera's at. So I'm gonna move my camera over to the left so that we're not uh, blocking that information. Now before we get underway, let's uh, take a look at the external view so we can see how things are. So the way the script works is it places our vessel at a random location. This location's pretty flat, but a lot of times it won't be. And that's the reason that we have this uh, platform. Because sometimes you're, you'll get placed inside of a crater or on the edge of a crater, and you'll be at such an angle that without this platform, you're, as soon as you started the mission, your vessel would just start sliding down the hill or something. And that was actually what was happening in one of the early beta versions. So I was like, yeah, we really need a way to make sure that when we start the mission, uh, the vessel is nice and flat. So Dimitri uh, made these cool platforms and attention to detail, he put this little ladder there so that the crew could have a way to get up and down from the platform. I thought that was a really nice touch. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the vessel. Now, before, uh, before we go any further, this is where I'm going to draw the line in the sand and say, you know, if this is something you want to try out on your own and you don't want to see me fiddle around with it, then this is the time to turn off the video. Okay, if you're continuing to watch, then hopefully you've already messed around with it, or, you know, maybe you just don't have any intention of messing around with this and you just want to kind of see what I'm doing. Whatever is fine. So we're going to continue on. 
Now, as, as neat as these virtual cockpits are, uh, I think it can get a little difficult to pan the cameras around and it mm, causes a bit of motion in the video playback. So I'm going to go to the 2D to the 2D panel and I'm going to scroll all the way down so that I have uh, access to everything. I'm going to take a sip of water. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open the retro doors just so that, you know, in case I'm in the middle of something and I need to quickly back off the thrust, I can, you know, I can have that ready to go. Sometimes, you know, I have an emergency situation and I need to throw in a little bit of retro and I, the doors aren't open and it's a big pain. Okay, so currently we are at 280 degrees, which is, um, you know, just slightly north of straight west. The direction that we need to be going to get to our target is 321 degrees. So we're not too far off from that location. So we need to hover up off the pad, rotate to 321 degrees and go in that direction. Now to make all that a little smoother, and since we are on a limited DV budget, I'm going to bring up a burn time calculator. I'm gonna switch over to the hover engines and I'm going to tell burn time calculator to give me a 40 DV boost using the hover engine. So it's just gonna throw me straight up into the air from where I'm at and then I'm gonna rotate and take off in the direction of 321 degrees. So let's light this candle. Let me uh, bring up my surface and let's see, rotation's already on. All right, let's go. 20. And rotating over to 321. And we're almost there. About right there okay full power on the main lock that in and now i'm going to pitch the vessel back a little bit i don't really know what the best angle here is but we're going to go for something like that and hopefully that's good enough because i have actually done i have actually taken off at such a shallow angle that i just immediately ran into a crater wall because i wasn't paying attention to my surroundings uh, one way I can prevent that is to use my cool camera angles here. I talked about this in my uh, in my installation video, but now I'm going to watch the uh, so the way I'm going to know to stop burning is in Map MFD uh, I have ground track on, and when that line touches the target, I'm good enough. I'm not going to wait all that time though. I'm going to stop it just a little bit early, about right now in fact and I'm gonna zoom in on that target to get a little bit better of an idea of just how much velocity I need so I'm gonna try to get this the target near the center of the map like that zoom in zoom in again that's pretty good now I'm gonna fire the main engine some more and just the control thrust now just to close in the last little bit and we're almost there it doesn't have to be exactly there but I like to I like to get as close to the target as I can and I have actually done a much better job of getting that target than I have in previous videos so okay make sure all my engines are off or not previous videos but previous attempts um, okay so now I have that uh, I have and I have enough acceleration to get to the target. Let me go ahead and raise my landing gear. Okay, but what I really want to know is how well am I um, lined up with the target because I can't really rely on Map MFD for the most for the most part. I would say I'm probably done with Map MFD. Now I'm going to bring up Pursuit MFD, and it has this uh, relative program so I'm gonna bring that up and I'm gonna target the target which is just called target and using without changing my orientation from where I'm at right now I can see that I'm currently in terms of my my left right my X I'm off by five and a half kilometers and it's getting slightly worse so what I can do let me actually go level with the horizon you can see immediately everything starts changing when I do that but let me go level with the horizon here. Actually, prograde would probably be even more ideal, but this is good enough. 
I'm just going to give the vessel time to settle. And now that it's settled, I'm going to shut that off. And I'm going to use a little bit of translation. So let me get into translation mode. Translation. To do an adjustment to get this closer. I just don't know which way I need to go. So let me try pressing 1 in translation mode. And I don't know if that's... Yeah, that does look like that's slowing down. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of slowed down to just about a stop. So if I put in just a bit more translation, it should make it better. And it does. Okay, so it was... I don't know if it's always the true, but it was negative, And I pressed 1 to improve it. Now... Again, that is with my vessel in its orientation that it had when it took off. If you rotate even a little bit, all the, all this is going to change. So I like to get that done before I do any uh, rotations or anything like that. And we have quite a ways to go. We have 1,500 kilometers to go. So I don't want to put in a ton of translation because everything I put in I have to take back out at some point. And since we have so far to go... I'm hoping that with just that little bit of translation I did, it will be enough to get us more or less on to zero by the time we get over there. All right, let me take a sip of water. And I'm just kind of looking at everything and trying to decide what I want to do next. At some point, we're going to want to do time warp, but I don't want to get going on time warp too soon because the, the earlier I can make my decisions, the better off I'm going to be. So I'm still climbing. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, falling and hitting the ground anytime soon. So let's see here. We're about 1,400 out. We're moving at that speed. Okay. So I feel like I'm okay for time warp right now. So let's go ahead and do that. And get a little bit closer. Now we probably... I would say maybe like at Apoapsis or something, that's kind of when we want to maybe start making, uh, well, I mean, depends, you know, whichever comes first, you know, because we, it, it, what I need to know is when do I need to begin to slow down, but I don't have to worry about that yet. Because I don't know exactly what my, my horizontal speed's going to be. But we're getting close to Apoapsis. You can see our vertical speed's coming down. It's almost at zero, which means it'll be you know, we'll be falling, we're at 118 kilometers, so we're really high, probably way overshot my pitch angle. And that's going to cost me. So my, my left right is uh, coming down. So what I might actually want to do, because I've got a long ways to go, I'm going to go back to horizontal uh, level. And, you know, you can see everything just went out of whack there. Uh, but I'm no longer facing... Uh, prograde. So let me go rotation and get right there. That's pretty close to prograde. So yeah, I don't quite know what's going to happen. Let me bring up map MFD and see. So it looks like I'm pretty well on target. One thing I can do, if I go ahead and go to proper prograde and look at um, pursuit MFD, and when I do this, my, my X and Y are going to switch because I'm in a, you know, I'm in a different orientation. But what I want to see is once the ship gets settled, I want to see how far off I am from the target according to Pursuit MFD. I'm going to do a little bit of 10 time warp just to give it time to settle. should be settled by now. So currently, and again, my X and Y have switched. So I'm now looking at my Y. So I'm currently 8.2 kilometers off. That's quite a bit. Let me look at map MFD again. Hmm, it still looks like it's going to be pretty close. So I don't know. So I think I'm probably still a bit early to make any of those decisions. So let me warp time forward a little bit more. And we're coming down. So let me get it about 500 kilometers. About right here. So according to Pursuit MFD, I'm missing the center of the target by 8.2 kilometers. That's quite a large miss. Let me see 
and yeah, map MFD looks like it's starting to agree with that a little bit. So what I'm going to do in this orientation, I think I need to push the vessel in the current, based on the orientation I'm in right now, I think I need to basically push the vessel up. So I'm going to turn off prograde and I'm going to try to use a little bit of hover to push my vessel up because I think that's what I need to do. And I'm wrong. It's going, it's, it's getting worse. So let me rotate the vessel 180 degrees. And overshot that a little bit. So let me back up. It's about right there. And now let me put in a little bit of hover. Trying to bring down my Y. Okay, so it's quite tricky to figure this out. So a little bit of hover, and I think I think that's going to be all we're going to do because I don't want to I don't want to put in so much that um, uh, that I have to take a ton back out. So let me go back to surface mode. I'm going to let the vessel settle back into level with the horizon, but I do want to be facing mostly prograde, and unfortunately the level horizon doesn't care. It just gets you level. So let me actually go to this mode for a second. And we're in rotation. So let me rotate over so that my vessel is on the center line. And we're going to need to slow down. We're going to need to make that decision pretty soon. OK, so now I can look at my X again. It looks like it's, uh, I guess it's coming down a bit difficult. OK, back to surface. OK, so let me let me uh, let me actually go ahead and end this video here because we have quite a bit left to do. So let's uh, control P for pause and let me switch to the other camera view. All right. So do you think I'm going to make it or do you think I'm going to crash? Do you think I'm going to run out of fuel? Leave your predictions in the comments down below and yeah, I'll see you in the next part.